Using a few effects and a few different techniques, you can create an incredibly realistic paper cutout effect with Pixelmator Pro. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to do just that. Start by creating an empty new image with a single layer. Then choose the Effects tool and add the Clouds effect to your background layer. Set its size to around 600% and position its effect rope to get a nice mix of dark and light areas. Now add the Gaussian blur effect and set its radius to 50 pixels. Then click the name of the Gaussian effect and turn on Preserve Transparency. This will stop the effect from creating transparent areas around the edges of the layer. Finally, apply the Posterize effect and set its levels value to 17. We'll now use this texture to create the paper layers. Choose the Color Selection tool and click Select Color Range in the tool sidebar. Using the Color Picker, click on the darkest part of the texture. Move the range slider to around 25%, making sure to select one or two shades of gray at a time. Then click Apply or press the Return key on your keyboard. Control click the selected area and choose Convert into Shape. Hide this new layer by clicking its visibility icon in the layer sidebar, and then click Select Color Range again. Click the darkest area once more, and this time increase the range slider so that an extra shade of gray is selected. Click Apply or press the Return key on your keyboard. Then Control click the selected area and choose Convert into Shape. Hide this new layer and repeat the same steps increasing the selected area each time. If you get lost, you can count the number of layers you've already created, and when moving the range slider, you can count the number of times the size of the selection increases. For example, now we have three shape layers, so we'll need to count the same number of jumps, three, to create the new shape. One, two, three. We're going to create nine layers in total. So for the ninth layer, we'll move the range slider to 100% and just create a shape from that. Now reverse the order of these shape layers in the layer sidebar. It's easiest to drag the bottom layer to the top, then the new bottom layer to just below the top layer, and so on. Select every shape layer. Then control click one of these layers and choose Show. The Style tool should be selected automatically, so with all these layers still selected, delete the Stroke Layer style and add the Drop Shadow and Inner Shadow Layer styles. Here, it might help to turn off the vector outline to make things easier to see. To do that, control click the canvas and turn off Show Outline. For the fill layer style, feel free to use color or gradient fills, though we'll be using gradients. For the inner shadow, set its blur to 8 pixels, distance to 3 pixels, color to black, angle to 130 degrees, and opacity to 70%. For the drop shadow, set its blur to 3 pixels, distance to 2 pixels, color to white, angle to 320 degrees and opacity to 35%. Now adjust the fill layer style of each shape with any colors you like.
Once you've customized your colors, you've pretty much finished creating the paper cutout effect, but we'll be creating one more layer on top. Choose the type tool and write a word or a few letters. We're using the New York font created by Apple, and we'll be writing the word now. Once you've written your text, click the Edit menu and choose Load Selection. Then click the Edit menu again and choose Invert Selection. Finally, choose any selection tool. The Rectangular Selection tool, for example, control click the canvas and choose Convert into Shape. You can also delete the text layer at this point. Choose the Style tool and delete the Inner Shadow Layer style. We'll be using a solid color for the fill, but you can use a gradient if you like. Change the Shadow Layer style's color to black, then set the blur to 10 pixels, the distance to 0 pixels, and the opacity to 80%. Now we can also experiment with changing the appearance of each letter. Start by selecting all the paper shapes and group them together. Then duplicate this group twice. To make it easier to keep track of which letter is which, name the groups. Then choose the Arrange tool and turn off Auto Select at the bottom of the Tool Options pane. Select the end group in the layer sidebar because automatic layer selection is turned off and resize it so the layer fits more or less in the letter N. Repeat the same steps for the O and W groups. Don't worry if the groups overlap. We'll fix that now. Expand the end group and group the layers inside it one more time. Then add a mask to the top level group. Choose the paint tool and using a hard basic brush with its color set to black, paint over the letter O. Do the same for the O group, painting over the letter W. You don't need to create a mask for the W group because it's the bottom layer. Now, when you move or resize the patterns in these letters, they won't get in the way of one another. To make this look even more lifelike, you can add a paper texture at the top of the layer list. Change its blending mode to overlay. Then apply the color controls and high pass effects to it. Experiment with the radius slider of the high pass effect and the contrast slider of the color controls effect to get a result that looks convincing. Finally, you can group all the colored layers together and apply some finishing touches to them using the color adjustments tool. And there you have it, an incredibly realistic and very beautiful paper cutout effect created with Pixelmator Pro.